Hey everyone, it's Keisha Charmaine and I'm back and I'm sorry if I look a pickle. I just threw something together really quickly. I'm about to go to bed, but I was really feeling the need to make this video now while it was on my mind. This video was inspired by Wendy Williams show I was watching it a couple days ago. I had a day off and you know, a lot of the times things that Wendy Williams says I find very problematic, but I'm a fan of hers. Don't ask me why, I'm not quite sure, but I like Wendy Williams and in this episode in particular two things bothered me one more than the other but the first thing was she was talking about how um madonna had her show i believe at madison square garden and sean penn was in attendance to support her and she was gushing she was so excited that sean penn and madonna are being friendly and she's just hoping that you know that they hook up that they get back together or something and i'm just thinking mm, madonna and sean penn i think that's pretty much before my time but from what I know of Madonna and Sean Penn, didn't Sean Penn beat the hell out of her with a baseball bat? Hmm, but they're such a cute couple. I don't know, whatever you're into, Wendy. The second thing that I found really problematic, what she said in this episode, was after Viola Davis won her Emmy for Best Actress, um, Wendy said that she wished everyone would stop acknowledging the fact that she's the first black woman to win the award and she wants she would rather people stop referring to black people doing things as the first black person to do things in 2015 because it's 2015 according to her and i find that that's a terrible idea i think that is very important from now and forevermore to acknowledge when black people are the first to do anything and I feel like that for several reasons. Several months ago I worked with fourth and fifth graders and it was February Black History Month and we were you know obviously learning about really influential people in black history you know and we were also talking about slavery and for many of the people, many of the kids in the class, many of them had never heard of slavery. Mind you, these are 4th and 5th graders, that's about 9 to 11, the age range. I had to be the one to educate them on slavery and I felt well equipped to do that. I was an Africana Studies major in college. I graduated from SUNY Albany in 2013 and I felt like, okay, I have the knowledge to, to tell these kids about what happened here in America, here on American soil. I was trying to be as sensitive to their age as possible, I wanted to break it down to them to the point where they understand, but at the same time, I don't want them to be fearful. I failed. I failed at that. So many of them, like, it was written all over their face how it affected their self esteem as black kids. Oh, I didn't even mention that. Only 90% of the kids are black. Um, a few of them were a Puerto Rican, and um, one or one of them is Chinese. Just to see like how heartbreaking, how heartbroken they were, it was like, man, I have to be the one to tell them. Damn, we have to deal with the psychology that comes with simply knowing that the people that we come from were treated as slaves in a world, in a country, where our constitution says that all men are created equal. Miss Thompson, if the constitution says that all men are created equal, how come black people were slaves? To answer your question, little Jamal, that's because black people weren't people. You were only three-fifths of a person, that's why like it really hurt me and I can imagine like being a parent just having a parent of black kids like having to teach constantly teach and reteach things about America to American black kids because it's real and it's different when I was growing up you know we didn't have social media we um, you know, we just had what the news was trying to show us. 
nowadays you're not only learning what the news is showing you we're seeing things that the news wants to hide and i don't believe i don't believe that you know there's so much more police brutality nowadays i just feel like it's more known we're more conscious of it we're hearing more about it because of social media i was so like growing up i wasn't hearing about it that often you know i do remember amadou diallo when i was about um like fourth grade i remember he learning about amadou diallo um and yeah that hurt me and but like imagine but that's that's just one name and now kids these days like you're hearing about a, a different kid getting killed by a policeman for being black like let's be real for being black and it's you hear a different name every month and it's like i mean and it's it's happening more frequently than that it's like every day these kids like uh, not even just the kids but like adults too our self-esteem is like I don't mean necessarily our self-esteem because a lot of us are you know pretty confident individuals but I mean when it comes to identifying as a black American or a black person in America it comes with a lot a lot of baggage and it's really disheartening it's really troubling and it's really stressful you know are you familiar with jane elliott's brown eyes blue eyes experiment if you're not i'll have the link below please check it out it's i find it to be very very important um i saw it a while back and basically it's about um jane elliott what she does she has a group of people she separates them according to their eye color so she has blue eyes and then brown eyes and the brown eye people get treated as if they are you know super intelligent and so just super deserving of privilege and blue eyes people get treated as if they are second class citizens and it's supposed to sh um, demonstrate how prejudice in society and segregation and things of that nature institutionalized racism insert your ism here it's to show how these things affect your abilities and they affect your self-esteem and they affect your confidence thus affecting how far you get in life i mean that was kind of the point of the experiment it didn't take too long for them to realize okay this is an experiment to show about prejudice and you can you can see like the ones who were super racist and the ones who were more understanding it was very apparent and I like, definitely watch that that um experiment and you can understand why it's very important for us to constantly uplift black people minority people in general really but we're talking about black people right now all lives matter but we talk about black lives right now um it's that's why it's so important to for us to uplift our race every single chance that we get that's why we have shows like black girls rock that's why we still acknowledge when people are the first black person to do something because it's important and it helps us feel like we are worthy we are strong we are intelligent we are talented we are excellent and that is important that's an important message and an important idea an important fact that we need to constantly remind ourselves um they told me a quote recently motivation is like showers we need it every day. We need to constantly remind ourselves that we are worthy. We are deserving. We are beautiful. We are intelligent. And we need these constant reminders in a world that constantly wants to tell us otherwise. So, Wendy, that is why we need to continually acknowledge when we are the first black to do something. Congratulations to Viola Davis. I'm sorry that so many people are trying to shit on your achievement. 
but we see you we see you girl <laughs> we see you and um the black people keep on shining you know shine bright we see you we appreciate you we love you thanks for watching love light and locks you said that my eyes are telling me something you can never see something like me being with you